Chapter 1 is an introduction to medical terminology, and we're going to begin with understanding word structure. The chapter objectives for this particular course uh, include explaining why understanding medical terms is important, defining each of the four basic word parts, describing how word parts are put together to make a term and give an example, and using the pronunciation key to learn how to pronounce medical terms, as well as understanding medical terms by analyzing them by their parts. So why use medical terms? As many of you probably know, healthcare professionals need to read, write, speak, and understand medical language. Medical terms are much more precise than everyday words, and it's important to learn medical terms to their full medical meaning to understand medical conditions. Medical terminology is not as difficult to learn as it may seem. If, with most medical terms are made from word parts, and as we understand what prefixes, combining forms, and suffixes are, um, this leads us to learning common word parts and um, to understanding thousands of medical terms. This is uh, a great picture, and hopefully um, you won't feel like these students as the teacher talks about today's class and says, who can define the term esophagogastroduodenoscopy? Esophagogastroduodenoscopy. Um, so it's sounding out words and sometimes saying them multiple times for you to understand them, to break them apart into components, um, to be able to speak them with ease. Um, how are medical terms derived? Well, the earliest medical practitioners wrote, spoke, and read in Greek and Latin um, because these were the languages of science and education. And in present day, medical terminology comes from a combination of sources. These are these were parts derived from early languages, um, from modern language, and from proper names of maybe the uh, scientists or the physician that discover the procedure or process or um, uh, uh, developed um, that process, so proper names. Word parts, let's talk about that. So the root word gaster comes from the Greek word for stomach, gaster. So if we know that that word means stomach and we read the word gastritis, um, we can maybe figure out that it's an inflammation of the stomach. Gastro gastrotomy is the surgical incision into the stomach, or gastroesophageal, um, which means pertaining to the stomach and the esophagus. If we look at the um, uh, how medical terms are derived from modern language, uh, the term physician comes from a French term, uh, physician, and a physician is a person who's been educated, trained, and licensed to practice the art and science of medicine. We see that the word hair um, comes from an Anglo-Saxon term, hair, and um, it means the keratinized fibers that arrive, uh, arise from hair follicles. If we look at how medical terms are derived from proper names, uh, Two examples here, one is Kaposi sarcoma, that's a type of cancer commonly seen in AIDS patients. And it was originally described by a dermatologist named Moritz Kaposi. Uh, the papaniculic or PAP test, um, which is a microscopic examination of cells collected from the vagina and cervix to detect abnormal changes, very common test, and this was invented by and named after Dr. Georges Papanakulau. And most medical terms are built from word parts. So basic word parts include the root, a prefix, and a suffix. And just as putting these parts together builds medical terms, dissecting them into parts will determine the term's meaning. 
For example, we have the word here angioplasty, which is the surgical repair of a vessel. And we see angi means the vessel or the duct, and plasty means surgical repair. Word roots, um, a word root is the core or the main part of the word, and all medical terms have a word root. And you will be memorizing many, many, many word roots. And sometimes there are two or more word roots that have the same meaning. So, and that's just practice, practice, practice. So from one word root comes many different medical terms. So in this diagram, um, we go back to the word root gaster, and we see gastritis, gastric ulcer, gastrotomy, gastrointestinal tract, and the epigastric region. And so this word root is used to describe many um, parts of the gastrointestinal tract. Some other common word roots are cardi for heart, cerebral for brain or cerebrum, the col or colon for colon, um, the section of the large intestine, crany for cranium or skull, um, dermat for skin, disc uh, for disc as in the disc of a spine, gaster, we saw that for stomach, nephr or ren for kidney, osti for bone, pulmon for lung, Prefixes. Uh, a prefix comes before the word root in a medical term, and many medical terms are built with prefixes. Prefixes contribute to the meaning of the term, and they're always spelled with a hyphen at the end, indicating that it's a word part to be attached to another word part coming after it. Examples of prefixes are pre for before, post, after, behind, Peri for around and surrounding, intra for within, and inter for between. Additionally, sub or infra for below or beneath, supra or supra, super for above, a uh or an for without or not, poly for many or much, dis for painful, difficult, or abnormal. Suffixes. So a suffix comes after the word root in a medical term, and it's almost all medical terms are built with suffixes, and they contribute to the meaning of the term. And they're always spelled with a hyphen at the beginning, indicating that it's a word part to be attached to another word part coming before it. Examples of this include um, ac, al, or ari, ik, or aus for pertaining to, Alja for pain, ectomy for incision or surgical removal, gram for a record or recording, uh, ism or aya for a condition of, itis for inflammation, iam for tissue or structure, logi for study of, oma for tumor, tomi for incision. Combining vowels added to word root. So a combining vowel is added to a word root to make it easier to pronounce the term. And the combining vowels that are usually used for this are O, but sometimes I or E. And combining vowels are best learned along with the word root to which it's attached. And a word root plus its combining vowel is called a combining form. So combining forms are use the word root followed by a slash and the combining vowel. So in this course, we're going to use combining forms and they're going to be presented rather than word root. So the word root cardi is going to have the combining vowel with the um, slash, forward slash, and the no um, to be cardi o, the combining form. So let's look back at those word roots we just talked about um, with their combining vowels attached. So for cardio is heart, cerebro is brain or cerebrum. You can see it's easier for me to pronounce them. Colo or colano for colon, cranio for cranium or skull, dermato for skin, disco for disc, gastro for stomach, nephro or reno for kidney, osteo for bone, and pulmono for lung. 
Um, so let's put some of these parts together. So you, rules for using the combining vowel. So to use the combining vowel when a combining form is joined to a suffix that does not begin with a vowel. Here we can see nephro for kidney and logi for study of. So it actually sounds better together, together as nephrology, which is the study of the kidneys. Uh, rules for using the combining vowel um, when the combining form is joined to a suffix that does not begin with a vowel. So here we have um, arthro or joint and itis inflammation. So arthritis is the inflammation of a joint. If the suffix begins with the same vowel as the combining form ends with, do not repeat it. So um, we have cardio and itis. We're not going to say cardioitis, it's carditis. Using the combining vowel when two combining forms are joined together, so here we have myomuscle plus cardio heart plus all. So myocardial is pertaining to the heart muscle. The next example is osteo for bone plus arthro for joint and itis. We don't want to add every one of those words and just stick them together, but we're going to come up with osteoarthritis, so inflammation of the bone and joint. So these rules are generally, generally based on how terms are spelled so that they can be pronounced more easily. So get into the habit of saying terms aloud or at least thinking them out loud to yourself. Let's talk a little bit about plural endings. So some medical terms use the common S or ES for plural ending, but many medical terms have special plural endings related to their origins in Greek or Latin. And because not all special plural endings apply to all terms, you just have to learn the plural form when you learn the term. So um, here's some examples. Uh, for the singular ending of uh, vertebra, a spinal bone, a uh, plural ending is vertebrae. Uh, lumen is the interior space of a vessel. Lumina is the plural ending. Index for alphabetical list or directory or indices um, uh, is the plural. Uh, ankylosis is a stiff joint. Ankyloses is the plural testes is the male reproductive uh, testis sorry is the male reproductive gland and testes is the plural phenomenon uh, occurrence or object perceived and phenomena is the plural um, so you can kind of see these spermatozoon is a male sex cell a single and spermatozoa is the plural Diverticulum is a pouch or sac within the organ. It's the singular ending. Diverticula is the plural ending. Atrium is the singular ending for the upper heart chamber, and atria is the plural ending. Nucleus is a structure within a cell, and the nuclei is the plural ending. Glomerulus is the capillary cluster at the entrance of each nephron, and a glomeruli is the plural ending. Um, uh, phalanx is the finger bone, but uh, all your fingers are the phalanges. So we're going to move on to spelling in our next discussion, live lecture. So pause here and move on to the next live lecture to talk about spelling.